Okay, so what you are looking at there is a bed bug. I never thought the day would come that I would start a Facebook Live with a disgusting picture of an insect, but that is in fact what we're talking about today here at KHOU. So I am Tiffany Craig, and this is Jeff Keller, oh. and he is an associate certified entomologist. Yes. So we're going to talk about a number of different bugs, but bed bugs will be on the top of the list because here in Houston, they top a lot of lists around the country, right? Yes, yes we're somewhere in the, the top 10 in uh, bed bug cases. Why is that? A lot of factors. Um, it, the population, one, uh, mass transit has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of big hotel, motel chains that attract a lot of visitors from around the world. Because bed bugs are hitchhikers. But, correct. Right? That's kind of the deal with them is that they hop on people and they hop on luggage and all of that. Right. And uh, the reason they, they uh, hitchhike on the humans is because they need the, the blood meal to survive. Do you know how disgusting that sounds? I was hoping not to be too, but it, that's, it's for them to grow and maintain. That's what uh, the blood meal, they, they change from the egg through each instar um, molt that they have based on the blood meal that they have. Um, I'm going to pull something up just to show people kind of a little bit of what you were just talking about, like the lifespan of one. Yeah. But in the meantime, one of the big things that we hear at KHOU is people either have them in their home or more importantly in an apartment. And question number one is, how do I get rid of them? So talk to people about that. Well, it's highly recommended that you use a professional. Um, People try to do too many home remedies and have failures and get frustration, you know, out of trying to control it. Um, our number one preferred method is heat, thermal remediation, and maybe a combination of some residual insecticide uh, to control that. Okay, so what does that mean, heat? What do you go in there and do? Heat, we, uh, we bring in some industrial heaters designed to uh, get the temperature of the room 120 to 135 degrees and we must maintain that heat for six to eight hours in order to get all life cycles to include the egg under control. Um, because we're looking at a picture now of, God, this is so disgusting. I'm just gonna say that one more time. Um, the life cycle of a bed bug here, and what you see up top, those look like, looks like pieces of rice. Well, actually, in, in actual, they are, they're very microscopic. It's uh -huh. hard to see with the naked eye on the eggs. Because, and part of the reason we're, that we're showing these pictures is because the idea here is that if you go and either visit someone or stay in a hotel or something like that, you can actually do a visual inspection and see if maybe that's something that might be in your hotel room. Yeah, correct. And we, we you know, provide a checklist to, to where the person goes in there. You may roll down your sheets. You're looking for some uh, fecal matter staining in certain areas. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking for any live insects, adult insect uh, bed bug is roughly about the size of an apple seed. And so, example, right, I, I saw this, that you pull up the sheets mm -hmm. in the corner, right? right, And they would be kind of, it, they would be in the cracks and in the right. corners, that's where you would see it. Right, you want to pull it up over to them, all the way to the mattress. Okay. Um, because when they change sheets and everything like that, they can take what was there, but the mattress is the key. They have that uh, cord around the edge of the uh -huh, mattress, uh -huh. and they get up in there. Bed bugs by nature love to be in cracks and crevices. They're nocturnal, so it's looking in the inobvious to find them. Not they're not obvious in most cases. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Right. <laughs> so, here's something else that I was looking at. If you if you go in and stay at a hotel, someone suggested keeping your suitcase. This doesn't sound very practical to me, but whatever. Is keeping your suitcase kind of in the middle of the floor that would sort of help and you would maybe see them if they were trying to get to your suitcase? Well, actually, uh, you're on the right track, but okay. you know the little stand that they put in the hotel rooms for to sit your suitcase on? Put it on that stand. Uh, insects, oh, yeah, sure, the straps, the, the strap. strap stand. Yeah, yeah. right, you want to set it on that because it has a metal smooth leg where the bed bugs are unlikely to climb up it because of the smooth surface. You're not going to actually see the bed bugs crawling they're nocturnal. The lights go out, they're attracted to the CO2 that you know, you're know you admitting. Yeah. So that's, that's usually, but 
But when you're first walking in, you're probably not going to see anything. That's why a good, you know, inspection, you'll know. Do, do you get itchy when you think about them? Because <laughs> I can't, I can't seriously. When can't I'm doing it. an inspection, yes. And do you worry that you're going to end up being the person they jump on, and then you take them home? I have to always wonder about we that. We always worry about that. You know, we take precautions going in there, depending on the, the nature of the infestation that we're uh -huh. alerted to. We have what's called the, the white Tyvek suits, you know, that, so that way if something is crawling on you, you can oh. easily, you know, identify it. Uh, we'll take, we can tape our pant legs, you know, but when we highly encourage our employees to do the inspection, you go home and we have a checklist uh -huh. to minimize if you did pick some hitchhikers up, how to, you know, uh, take your clothes in the garage, take them off, put them in a bag, put them in the dryer, high heat for an hour, just in case. Sure, that's a really good, that's a really good tip. Because your dryer gets warm enough that it'll kill them, right? Right. And then we encourage uh, the, the people that are traveling, you were talking about suitcases, mm -hmm. when they come home, take your clothes out in the suitcase in the garage, if you have a garage, take it out there, immediately put everything in there into the washer dryer, high heat water, yeah. you know, and, and dry it at that point. And then set, I would set the suitcase out in the sun all day, just if you're not sure. Okay. And if you even suspect it, you'll probably think you have them, right? Right. If you, if you might have seen one somewhere, you, you're pretty sure at that point, whether you really do or not, that you think you do have them. Right. And you may want to call somebody at that point. <laughs> um, we're going to take some questions. I don't know um, if any of you have any questions at this point. And we're actually we're willing to talk about other bugs as well. But it just so happened that this is Bed Bug Awareness Week, which who knew there was an awareness week? But part of the reason that it's important, especially here in and around Houston, is that it's going to be worse this year for bed bugs. Like, is it? Are we seeing more of them now, and why? We are getting a lot more calls this year already than we did last year and it's really hard to attribute any one factor you know uh -huh. as to why it except um, travel and and vacationing you're, you're moving around it's, it's just with the, this many people in mass transit it's hard to predict what's where's the hot spot going to be so I know that you said call the professionals and you're in the pest control business yes okay so and everyone's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Call this guy. But if you are at home and you suspect and you do not have the money, mm -hmm. because not everybody wa joining us now um, can afford to pay mm -hmm. for this kind of treatment, because it can run a few thousand dollars. Right. Right. What can you do? What else can you do that's a little more cost efficient? Well, f one is, is if you think or, or, or uh, you want to be more aware. So I would, you know inspect your own house more on a frequent basis. Um, make sure that uh, you, washing and drying your clothes, you know, high heat for an hour mm -hmm. if, if you can. If you, you know, maybe rotate the drawers of clothes you haven't used in a while. Um, inspect in and around um, your um, surroundings in your, uh, your bedroom. If you suspect bites on you, have those looked at. Um, we, we can't identify what bites you, you know, as far as tell you what kind of bite is on you, but maybe a dermatologist or somebody like that. But, but you've been around them enough to probably know, you know, but, sort but, of what a bite looks like from a bed bug. All right. Uh, bed bugs have a distinct eating pattern. Um, and they're nocturnal, and, and they feed, once they've uh, found a host, so to speak, uh -huh. and you, they they only feed for minutes, you know, to get their blood meal, but they leave a distinct pattern um, where they, because they, they don't just stay in the same area like a mosquito, mm -hmm. they move around and they're very sneaky, smart, that once you, if you move, you know, whatever, they stop their feeding, wait till everything settles down, then they'll start again once, you know, you're asleep. That's one of the reasons, you know, when, when you're least active, they're more likely to bite an individual. Okay, okay. So um, now Chrissy doesn't have a picture, but she's asking a question, and uh, let me just ask it and see what happens. I have the tiniest, tiniest bug in my bed, and it's coming in through the window. What could it be? It could be numerous, you know, uh, if it's a crawling insect, 
you know, coming from the outside, I highly doubt a bed bug, um, but it could be a, it could be an, an ant. It, it, it could be you know, one of several, you know, hundred insects in the area. Best thing, take a picture, send it to us, and we can ID it. And where would people send that? They can send go to our website, um, holderspestsolutions.com. Say it again and say it slowly uh, so people get it. Holderspestsolutions.com. They can take a picture. Um, there's, you can go on there, ask the expert. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, send it to the, come bring a, bring a sample to the office. You know, we, we have walk-ins all the time. Um, Gracie says, Houston must really be infected with them in order for this awareness to take place in the newsroom. Well, Gracie, it really, it's a, it's a thing. And I, I say that I work in the consumer department and I kid you not when I say multiple times a week, we get either calls or emails from people who live in apartments and say, I've got bed bugs, what do I do? So we know it's, a, it's an issue, we know it's a big issue, and then people that stay in hotels and motels, same complaint. Right. And the problem is, when it comes to apartments is, well, who brought them in and who should be responsible for them? Right. A lot of times that's a really difficult thing to figure out. And that's a lot of things we get asked ourselves, you know, and if, if you look back at the history of the bed bug, they were totally, almost, totally eradicated during World War II. They were almost all but wiped out of the United States. Uh -huh. But the pesticide practices back then are a lot different than the pesticide practices we have today. Back then we were putting DDT and other chemicals directly into our beds, sprinkling, you know, yeah. on there to control them. Yeah. Um, there used to be uh, products made here in Houston labeled for bed bugs on you know those old mosquito sprayers yeah. that have you know they're labeled to spray everything down in your house well technology chemistry uh, epa and control uh -huh. you can't do that mass travel is all about a big comeback to it and it's making it harder and the reason we have the awareness week is it's a, it's through the national pest management association it's a worldwide issue it's not just the united states but it's just because the chemicals nowadays, the, in the, the um, bed bugs, they're, they're becoming chemical resistance. New strains of them? N new strains are being introduced um, as population gets to grow and reproduce. Yeah. They become tolerant to the chemical over time. And so it's, it's an ever evolving. And so far, the only thing that they're not a tolerant of is heat. <laughs> And that's why we, you know, we recommend and control it. Describe that again. I've actually been out with a company that did a heat treatment, mm -hmm. and tell us again how hot it has to be and how long it has to be that mm -hmm. hot. And you have to get into the crooks and crevices of yeah. the situation. Basically, we want to heat the each room up to 120 degrees to 135 degrees. That's where the machines cap out at, and you got to hold the temperature six to eight hours, depending on one the construction of the home. Mm -hmm. um, as far as is it made out of wood, is it made out of bricks? We call the clutter factor as far as is, is there a lot of obstruction in there to keep the heat. Once we get it up to temperature on all our, they're monitored by a computer. Uh -huh. Once all our sensors are up to the current uh, correct temperature, then we turn on fans. And these fans are placed throughout key areas to force the heat into those cracks and crevices where bed bugs are known to harbor. That sounds expensive, Jeff. Can, Talk to us about the kind of the cost factor uh, there. It can, it can be very expensive. Um, you know, it, it could basic, you know, easy math, um, depending on the construction of the home, the clutter factor, like I talk about, but a 2,000 square foot home can range from 2000 to $3,500 to be treated with heat. So the idea here is preventative, right? right? Let's walk back through again the things that you should do if you're staying somewhere where maybe you suspect they're there or if you're staying in a hotel. What should you do to, to I don't know, try to make sure that they don't hop on and go home with you? <laughs> well, uh, first thing like I, I would suggest is, you know, um, put your bag on the little stand in there, inspect in and around the bed. They're not just limited to the bed or nightstand. Bed bugs can be anywhere, but you can... Um, there's key signs that we're looking for. We're looking for uh, old staining, blood staining, fecal matters, but you know, in and, in and around the mattress, uh -huh. um, opening the drawers, you know, of the nightstands, uh -huh. you know, looking in there. In the cracks? Would they mostly be in the cracks? Could be. Okay. Uh, looking around the headboard, um, you know, 
behind the headboard, you, you know, feel around. I know you, if you do find one, you may squish one, but <laughs> uh, if there's like a painting above the headboard, you may, if it comes down, you may want to look behind that because they, they will hide wherever they feel safe. But, you know, just be aware. Uh, up the wall behind yes. a painting? They can't, yes. We, depending on the infestation, they could, you know, one, one of the things that we try to do is educate um, some of our, our clients that, ha that are hotels, motels, you know, uh, associations like that is mm -hmm. how to identify when housekeeping is in there to help, you know, so they can take immediate action and notify us to come in there and get it when it's small problem yeah. and, and not a big problem. Um, so, some uh, Gracie suggested um, people have their at-home remedies right. now, w whether or not they work long term or, or you know. So Gracie says, spray the blue fabuloso with alcohol every other day kills all kinds of bugs. That's her remedy for it. Blue fabuloso. Uh, Alcohol-based products, yes, when sprayed directly onto insects, mm -hmm. will kill them. The problem with bed bugs are is they're in cracks and crevices. They have microscopic eggs, and that's the part where the chemical doesn't ever get to, is the eggs. Yeah. And so that's where you know, a lot of the home remedies just don't uh, help there. But yes, directly on insect, I agree, it will kill them. We're gonna jump to, somebody said, can you carry a, ray, a can of Raid to hotels? I guess you can. I'm not sure, would Raid kill them? Well, I guess if you sprayed directly on them, if you sprayed, it would kill them. Correct, yeah, if you sprayed directly on them, again, then you'd be up all night. And it, that's Would you that's really the, want to sleep on that bed? <laughs> <laughs> if it, 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 what I suggest, if you suspect, <laughs> you think that they're, they're there, I would notify the front desk, let's move, yeah. or let's check out. Sure. Um, and you know what? You have a phone with a, um, with a flashlight on it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can look into all those little areas when you go into a hotel, mm -hmm. and you know what? you got a camera on there, take a picture and take it down to the front desk and say, hey, look, this is what's going on in our room. And you could research. Because it ends up becoming your problem if you take it home. Exactly. And oh. you could research online if anybody's ever had complaints there before. You yeah. know, it, you could uh, find out. Basically, the law states that they can't knowingly rent you a room that has bed bugs mm -hmm. without telling you. So, it, but... If they've ever had complaints before, I, you know, I'd beware. Well, and that's what somebody said. Um, hey, if you know of a place that has them, post it so we'll all know. <laughs> but on the flip side, though, they can be killed. I mean, you can yes. get rid of a bed bug infestation? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Right. So somebody asked about bleach. Debbie says, would bleach kill them? Direct contact, yes. Direct contact. And that's the trick is that... Um, if it was that easy and it was just direct contact, but right. they're going to be hiding, especially when they know you're coming, they're it, it, hiding. Exactly. Whew. All right, so we know that's a problem in Houston. Are there any other large, I mean, other than mosquitoes, because we know mosquitoes are they're here already and they're only going to get worse, right? Right. Yeah, one thing about, uh, you know, um, Houston area is it's 24-7, 365 um, pest of some sort. And it, different situations, uh, one of the biggest things, you know, I'm, I was seeing that uh, we have a roof rat population explosion going on in, the, I'm, in the Texas area. Hold on a second. Did you say roof rat? Roof rat. Oh, goodness. I'm not <laughs> sure I can handle much more. <laughs> um, when did that happen? Uh, it's been going over slowly over time, but um, within the last 10 years, it's exploded. Uh, yeah. And just because of the nature uh, of the rat and how they live and what they eat, they're very hard to control if not done correctly. They're very smart. Does Holder's Pest Solutions handle roof rats yes, as well? We do. Yes, we do. And I'm just curious, how do you handle that? Well, one thing, a good thorough inspection, um, find out where they're uh, located at in there, and you got to take the fight to them. You can't wait for them to come put a trap with the peanut butter on the floor because they're roof rats, so the, most of their stuff's going to be up high so they'll come down to feed yes but they're pretty smart once one trap goes off they become what's called trap shy but you got to you got to take the 
you got to get up in the roofs and the rafters to, to really get after them. Um, somebody here says, hang on. They call. They had bed bugs one time. They called their bed, their bug guy and had to treat one room three times. We caught the infestation early and got rid of them, but it took two months. They can be difficult to get rid of. If you catch them early, you have a bigger chance of not having them come back. Right, and that's usually what happens in your straight chemical application type control methods. Yeah. Um, because you have the different life cycles, and the main what, what uh, some pest control operators will do is do a service like one every seven to 14 days because of the life cycle and the egg laying and egg hatching. Mm -hmm. And so that's a period of time. But if they keep getting callbacks, it's because it's usually because they can't control the eggs. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody says if I have them at my house and I go and visit somebody else or vice versa, it's not a guarantee that you're transferring them from one to the other, but it's certainly a possibility. It, it's a high possibility, but you know, like you said, not a guarantee. It's just if you're at the right place at the wrong time when one gets on you. You're itching a lot. Well, it just it really <laughs> does give you kind of the heebie jeebies when you when you think about it. Because um, like what what purpose do these things serve in life? None. I mean what what are they here for? Is well I guess my thing. I'm gonna pull up this uh, well, my computer has just gone to sleep on me. But so we can go back to ancient history. They're, they were... Actually, we can, maybe we can look at it back over there again. So what are they here for? Well, ancient history, okay. uh, bed bugs uh, were in caves. Um, they have a close cousin that we know uh, called the bat bug. Looks similar, but just a little difference on identification under the microscope. Uh -huh. But where did we come from? Way back when, cave dwellers. Um, so they, they feed on blood that's the only thing that they feed on so as humans moved out of the caves bed bugs were spread kept being spread um, there's certain corners of the world where limited humans have been now there's more humans mm -hmm. moving around so it's 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 just it's been an ongoing issue this is this topic probably drives me nuts more so than any other because it's such a big problem, and it's incredibly expensive to solve the problem. Yes. Like, I, my job here is to help people solve problems, our consumers, and this one is next to impossible for me to help people solve because it, it is, in fact, it's an expensive treatment right. when, you, when it comes down to it because once you get them, like, you've got to get rid of them. Right. They're going to eat you up. Right. But, well, you know, I'm say a good thing, but um, it, people are more troubled by the, the mindset because everyone associates bed bugs with being unsanitary. They do, you're right. But that's not the case. They don't they don't care if you're rich, poor, clean, dirty. It's just two you, star hotel, five star hotel, it doesn't matter. Correct. And the the, the expansion is just because here lately they have and it's more because of the the restrictions to the type of chemicals that we've been using for the last fifty years. Then become tolerant you know, to it, so mm -hmm. it's it's made more of a challenge. Mass transit in the last 30, 50 years have really opened up the doors for them. Um, Nikki, no, sorry, uh, Ruben wants to know, do they attach to electronics? Do they get into electronics? Uh, y yes, and, uh, and the reason that happens if you got like, let's say a radio clock next to the nightstand uh -huh. or, you know, a couch that, you know, someone frequents quite quite often, they have cracks and crevices. Bed bugs like cracks and crevices. It has nothing to do with the warmth or the electronics. It's just that usually on every electronic device, there's an opening for air to go through, so they can go into any one of those holes. So that's where you got to be chemical. You can't spray chemical into those. Yeah. So that's that's where you know on the heat, you can force it into that. Oh, Jeff, this um. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. So I guess the kind of the takeaway from this is um, hopefully very few of you have them now, but but just be on the lookout. Like this is seriously a case where you should look around. If you're staying somewhere, you're putting your stuff down, wherever it is that you are, look around and, and, and make sure that you're not grabbing any hitchhikers on the way out. And when you when you come back home and you want to you know take that extra step, change the clothes in the garage, 
put your stuff immediately in the washer and dryer. And when they're in the dryer, um, how long do they need to stay in there? Depending on the setting, um, they're, they're all different. But I would say a high heat for you know at least an hour. That's a long, yeah. People will probably do it for two just to be sure, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Jeff Keller, thank you so much. Um, it's a it's a really disgusting topic, but it's a very important topic, <laughs> and we appreciate your expertise. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Look forward to more. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Not more bed bugs, though. No. I can't.